G'day. I must confess between you and me and the, the rest of the internet that I have one or two vices. One sort of vice I haven't got is a self-centering vice. And uh, I was thinking of something the other day where one of those would come in handy. I thought, well, I might try making one. I had a look online, saw a couple of um, designs there. The, the, the basic principle is pretty st straightforward. And so uh, this is the start of this, but today uh, I'll be doing the, the screw and the, the nuts for it. And um, then uh, later on I'll be doing the body and a few other bits and pieces. There's, there's not many parts to them actually, but uh, there's a little bit of interesting uh, machining work there. The first part I'm making up is the, um, the shaft with the screwer. Now, what makes a centering vise different from just a normal vise is that it's actually got two screws. So this is an M14 by 1.5 uh, right hand screw, the normal sort of thing. On this side I've got to put a uh, an M14 1.5 left hand thread and uh, this is this is pretty straightforward, you've seen me cut threads before. This one here is going to be uh, just a little bit different so I'll, I'll, I'll show a bit of that. But I need to, to hold that and so I've got my uh, ER40 collet chuck out and the reason I like holding threads in that is just that it's it's almost continuous, it gives you lots of support on there, whereas if I put that into three jaw chuck, there's a good chance that uh, it would dig into some of the threads and damage them. Uh, also because my three jaw chuck, or the main one, has got um, some pretty severe serrations on it, it could actually unscrew out of the, um, the, the chuck and so throw this th thread out. So what I've got to do now is basically take this down to the same diameter here, uh, so uh, 14 millimetres or just under 14 millimetres actually, and then cut a left hand thread on here. If I were cutting the right hand end of this uh, shaft, what I'd be doing is coming into the, the appropriate distance um, for the depth of thread, feeding along, and then when I got to my texture mark, I'd rapidly flick the handle to, to bring the tool out and because and, and if I do that at the same point every time I get a reasonably smooth um, thread exit without having to put a relief uh, joint in there. With a left hand thread though you've got to do that the opposite way you've got to sort of start here and feed in as quickly as you can to the depth of, of that you're cutting and let it run out right come back and do it again and you get to a point where uh, because of the material taken out and the depth of the thread and all that sort of thing that you're basically feeding straight in to go along. This is the screw uh, after I've finished cutting the, the, the threads on it. So I've got a left hand on one side and a right hand on the other side. And this is the right hand end, that's the left hand end. The gap there, there's a fork that goes in there to, to hold that central. Uh, and that'll be a bit of phosphor bronze, I think. And, and so that'll, that'll just sit in there. Uh, this end needs to have a hex put on it. But uh, apart from that, it's, it's pretty much finished. So the jaws will sit on there and fingers crossed they will be wound in and out as I wind the end of the, 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 the screw here. Over on the surface grinder for the moment, these are the pieces which are going to be um, sliding on my cast iron uh, base. And so I've 
put a grind here to get this parallel because that's that's going to be important. I want the uh, the tapped hole that goes through there to be to be basically square with that. I've also just taken a bit off the top, and the reason for that is that I want to. So I don't need to. I want to grind that surface there and that surface there down so that's nice and smooth. Um, it's not going to be fully in contact as in it's only going to be sort of about from about there out but uh, I need to get that smooth and as you can possibly see the milling cutter there has left a typical milling cutter finish. I want something a bit smoother so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this up in the grinder and uh, grind these two faces down hopefully I'll get them um, th that's about six higher than that so I'll, I'll take off probably six off there and then take off an extra thou or two for, for for clean up or I might you know take off the six and come over here clean that up and then go back over here to, to do this I'm not quite sure yet um, but that way I'll get these two faces parallel and the same thickness and hopefully that means that'll that'll slide on my uh, vice uh, just a little bit more easily. This is the part that I'm aiming for. Um, so I've ground the sides as I said so I can get that whole square. Uh, the top is ground just to give me a, a nice surface but also to give me that surface there. Now you can see here I've got a slight undercut which I'm going to have to put in with something like a woodruff cutter to get that surface uh, nice and neat and then I need to tune this surface so that it runs on in the inside of the cast iron That's going to be a little bit tricky, but I think we can manage that uh, This is just a bit of relief um, So the, the the critical surfaces here are this one which is going to run on the top of the vise that one which is going to run on the sides of the vise and this one here which is going to run uh, To hold these two together from that point of view. It's not a very good design because it means anywhere uh, and you lose the uh, the accuracy of your of your clamping, but uh, putting that to one side, it's an interesting design. So I've got these two pieces. I'll put that relief in there. That's a that's a sort of a two and a half deep relief there, uh, partly because I didn't want to have to cut that thread any longer than I needed to. But secondly, there's the the um, the thread, and what I want to do is get that so that's sitting in there somewhere. Right, the the jaws that go on top here are going to be, um, you know, coming to the halfway point. But that's how that works. This is the setup I'm using to drill my holes uh, and, and try and get them as perpendicular to the surface as I can. I've got a, a, an angle plate here, a couple of parallels on there and that's been tapped down well on that. Uh, I've then measured off there and centralised on there. So I've got a hole in there uh, which is seven and a half down from that surface there. Um, I'm not quite sure how well that's going to work because it's a it's an M14 hole, but it looks like it's mighty close. But I've got to trust my uh, my DRO, etc. Sometime, I guess. Um, so this is one. I've got the other one to do, and then I've got to put a right hand thread in one and a left hand thread in the other. Now you can buy taps for right hand threads. Um, not easy to come by and not terribly cheap. Left hand threads are, are almost a custom thing, so it's all going to have to be single pointed. I'm afraid. Uh, the steel I'm using is, is part of an old die set which uh, a friend of mine, uh, Ken, gave me and it's got me a little bit worried. It cuts very nicely so it's not the normal grade of mild steel I'm, I'm used to. Um, whether it's a, it's a nice tall die steel I'm not quite sure but we'll see how the uh, high speed steel uh, ground tools go with it uh, in a little while. This is one of those wonderfully dodgy setups which were well, partly of my own making but you know 
it is what it is. Uh, I have two problems here. One of them is that the hole in the middle of this chuck is big enough that this won't sit stably on it. The other problem I have is that the, the overhang here um, is the, the chuck jaws are, are slightly too big in that they'll push the, tend to push the part up. So what I'm doing here, I've got two bits of uh, my famous five millimeter rod here and that's acting basically as a parallel or a bridge or whatever you want to call it across that hole. And so that's hard up against that. I've then gone and used a bit of masking tape to hold a couple of small T-nuts onto the sides here and I'm going to uh, screw onto the T-nuts onto the to adjust my center position. Now, in terms of its dodginess, um, if I was spinning this chuck at normal speeds, I wouldn't be doing this. But uh, because I'm going to be, this is basically going to be thread turning and I'll, I'll be going probably oh, 50, maybe 80 RPM, uh, I think it should be all right. The nuts themselves were held in here, so they're not going to come flying out. The bits of rod might, but there's enough masking tape here, I think, that should um, stop that flying out instantly. If it does move, it'll, it'll probably move gradually and I'll, I'll, I'll see it. But um, yeah, sometimes you, you've got to do what you've got to do. If I'd left this a large piece, um, I could have tapped the, tapped the hole easily and then machined that back. But then it's a matter of, okay, how do you establish your datums, you know, get that axis um, where it should be and all that sort of thing. So yeah, a bit of a, bit of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. But this is how I'm going to tackle it. Uh, with all of these things, you know, you need to make your own judgment about what's, what's going to be safe and what's not. Um, I did clean the top of the chuck with some acetone to make sure that I, I wasn't trying to stick onto greasy stuff. We'll just have to see how it works. Here's my right hand thread nut. Uh, goes on the thread reasonably well. I probably could have made that a little bit looser, I think, because it's in a vise. Um, you don't want necessarily a, a terribly tight thread because it might uh, it might jam things up. But I'll just have to see how I go with that. Uh, if I need to, I guess I can always put the um, this part back in the in the in the lathe and take an, another bit off. I wouldn't want to try you know taking the nut out a little bit. One of the advantages of doing the the right hand in first, where I'm I'm threading into the nut, is I can work out what the depth has to be. And so having done that. Uh, I know that I need to, to feed in 70 thou when bringing that back and that will, fingers crossed, give me the same sort of thread. So that gives me a sort of a target to aim for. As I get close, I'll be trying the thread in the nut uh, just to, to check what the, the, the clearance is like, but um, so far so good. Here's where we are so far. So I've got my two uh, nuts, uh, left hand and, and right hand, on the on the thread. And as you can see, if I if I hold on to the end of the thread, which is approximately for the holding on to the middle of the thing there, they both move in and out and at the same rate. So that should that should centre quite nicely. Anyway, that's all I've got time for. So thanks for watching. See you for the next edition.